What is going on guys? Jeff here, Mad Headers Reef. Today we got a brand new video for you. We're going to be taking a look at 10 corals that every beginner looking to get started with corals should consider for their reef tank. But before we jump into any of that, if this is your first time being here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love some reef tanks like I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every single time that I upload a new video. All right, let's get into it. Top 10 corals ideal for beginners. Coming in at number 10, we have the Duncan Coral. The Duncan Coral is a LPS, which stands for Large Polyp Stony, and these are ideal for beginners because they are a little bit forgiving when it comes to water parameters, which doesn't only make them a good candidate for a beginner, but also for smaller tanks where fluctuations in water parameters can happen a lot faster. I like to call them the canary in the coal mine because they typically will give you a warning if things change from a water standpoint when they typically would be open. Sometimes they stay closed up, giving you an indication that maybe you need to start breaking out the test kit and doing a little bit of delving into the water chemistry. There are two different growth types with Duncans. You have tabling and branching. Tabling tends to grow in tight little clusters where your branching type will definitely have a little bit more space in between heads. Me being a person that likes to frag my corals, it is a little bit easier to frag the branching as opposed to the tabling, but both can be achieved without too much of a problem. Definitely a great coral for beginners. Check it out, the Duncan. Coming in at number nine, we have the Recordia. Yes, I did it. I put mushrooms in on a coral top 10. Eleanor, Eleanor, can you believe that this mad Hatter's Reef character put a mushroom in a top 10 talking about corals? Does he not know that mushrooms are not corals? Shame. 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 All right, so first things first, yes, mushrooms are not corals. Yes, they are more closely related to anemones than they are actually related to coral. And how's a man going to be on the internet making videos about corals and not ever be able to talk about mushrooms? Because mushrooms are actually a great addition to a reef tank for beginners, especially Recordia, which is what I should be talking about instead of doing this big long rant about mushrooms and mushroom corals and all that. Because mushroom corals is actually fundia, fun, fundia day, fungia day. There we go. We got there. But a great addition to a reef tank for beginners. Check them out. The Recordia. Not a coral. Coming in at number eight, one of my personal favorites, we got the Favia Brain Coral. Now this footage of this coral that you see here is one of my personal favorites. That is the Dragon Soul Favia. Uh, definitely one of the most prettiest corals out there. I am hammering this coral with white light. And yes, those are the colors of that coral. Pretty impressive. Pretty Pretty, pretty impressive. So Favia is a LPS coral. More specifically, this is a brain. And they can do rather well in a number of different types of lighting schemes and flow schemes. Typically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these guys in moderate to low light as well as moderate to low flow. At night, they do have sweeper tentacles that can come out. They're not super long. They're not like uh, Space Invader long or anything like that. Uh, but they will go to war with corals that are placed too close to them or if a coral happens to fall into them. Even though that they are a beautiful addition to a reef tank, they do require some extra care as far as staying on top of your water parameters, but definitely a great addition to a beginner reef tank. Check them out, the Favia. Coming in at number seven on our top 10 Beginner friendly SPS corals, one of my personal favorites is the Cyphastria coral. Now, these guys typically are in crusters, they're going to cover whatever surface that they grow on and typically will take on that formation. There are some plating types as well as branching types, but the most common one that you'll probably see is the encrusting type. Now, as far as what makes these guys good for beginners, is they are incredibly forgiving when it comes to water quality, and they also don't require a whole lot of light. As long as you don't put them in bright light, you will find success with this coral. And coming in at number six on our top 10 beginner friendly corals, we have another brain that is the maize brain. 
It is often also referred to as the platygyra, and these are some of the most interesting brain corals out there. And when you think of brain coral, typically what people think of is actually a platygyra. As far as tank placement and lighting requirements, this is not a very demanding coral. I typically like to keep this guy between 50 to 150 par, uh, depending on what you got going on for your lighting scheme. More often than not, they're definitely in the bottom half of the tank. And I'm going to make sure that they have plenty of room as well because they do have some sweepers that can come out, especially if their neighbors are getting a little too close to them. But definitely some of the more beautiful, forgiving corals that are out there and one that I almost have in every single tank. Check them out, the Platygyra. Next up, we got number five, and coming in at the number five spot, we got good old zoanthids. Now, anytime that you're talking about zoanthids, it's very important to stress the importance of personal protective equipment. Zoanthids often and sometimes, maybe or maybe not, have paletoxin within them. So, paletoxin is incredibly toxic and has been known to unalive a person or two over the years. Uh, and definitely a very sad subject, but often uh, if you are taking precautions and making sure that paletoxin is not entering your bloodstream. So if you have small cuts on your hands, don't go ripping into some zoanthids. If you're fragging zoanthids, make sure you're wearing a mask and or safety goggles and making sure that you're just taking every caution uh, so that you are protecting yourself and obviously make sure that you are accounting for things properly so that you're not putting others at risk as well. And that's really the hardest part about zoanthids is making sure that you are handling them properly. Outside of all of that, they are relatively forgiving when it comes to water quality, lighting, and the biggest thing really with zoanthids uh, is you gotta make sure that you're dipping them. Make sure that there's no pests on them because there's a lot of things that eat zoanthids. Coming in at number four, we got another mushroom. This is the Rhodactis mushroom, not a coral. Not to be confused with corals, more closely related to anemones, as we've pointed out earlier. Eleanor, Eleanor, the fool did it again. He put another mushroom on a coral top ten. Rhodactis mushrooms are probably some of my most favorite mushrooms out there. Uh, this one is a green Rhodactis, and blue-green, that's a pretty awesome color combination for anything in a reef tank. They also come in a wide variety of other colors, and they also bounce. This is why people absolutely love mushrooms. Not only that, they are relatively forgiving of a number of water parameters, and also they don't mind low lights. So if you're in a situation with a reef tank that you're trying to figure out what you can put in a certain area that maybe doesn't have the most amount of light, I would definitely take a look at zoanthids, uh, mushrooms, and cefastria. Three things that we've already talked about here on this list. One thing that is definitely important to mention about mushrooms is they are grubby. They have probably some of the most bacteria per living organism on them than anything else in the world so make sure that after you're done handling them you go and wash your hands now i know that most folks that are getting started in the hobby they definitely like the things that move around a lot they're not huge on the sticks but if you happen to want a stick and you are relatively new to the hobby i would definitely take a look at stylophora this is a sps branching coral that is probably one of the biggest building blocks of the wild reefs they're also known as cat's paw and even though that this footage right here isn't necessarily the best example of their growth pattern they're definitely a great addition to a reef tank if you are a beginner or relatively new and are looking to dip that toe in the SPS game, I would definitely recommend taking a look at the Purple Stylo or even one of the Rainbow Styles or the Stellar Style. They are a great, forgiving SPS coral and definitely one that I would recommend anybody that's looking to get started with SPS corals. Coming in at number two, one of my personal favorites, a very close relative of the good old-fashioned ACAM. We got the Echinata. This is one of the most prettiest tie-dye coloration corals that you can get out there. They are lower light, I would say something 100 par or less, and definitely want to put them on the sand bed. Uh, they tend to plate out and are a really good grower, especially if you're feeding them. They do love the food, so you can get away with a little bit subpar lighting with these corals if you don't have uh, the best light. 
give them a little bit more of the feedings. They do have a feeding response, which makes them kind of a fun coral to keep. They definitely have a little bit of a bite to them, so we want to make sure that corals that are above them are glued down so they're not going to accidentally fall and get stung by this guy. And coming in at the number one spot, we got the Blasto Musa. This is one of my personal favorites. There are such a number of different varieties of this coral. And as of late, I've been getting in some absolute monstrous, beautiful Blastos. The bigger of this variety is the Welsi or Welsi. And they actually, I didn't realize how big they actually can get. Like I got some that are probably about two to three inches across. The other smaller variety is the Merletti and they typically are like red and green. I guess there's a couple other colorations or morphs out there as well for the Merletti. But my personal favorite is a big old Welsi. Uh, they have some of the most beautiful colorations and they are reactive to feeding. Uh, they don't need a tremendous amount of light. Actually, most obvious keep them under too much light and they are a great addition to a reef tank for beginners hey if you want to dive into the subject of corals in a little bit more detail check this video out i will see you over there